Hi, I'm Logan. And I'm Matt. And we're here to talk to you about motivation and, and what it means to motivate your people. Uh, and uh, does money really motivate people or what else is involved in getting your people uh, motivated? Logan, you ready to do this? Let's do it. So for our agenda today, we're going to start with defining motivation and then move into the different types of motivation. Beyond there, we're going to go into how do you apply that. A um, couple things we're going to look at are different, uh, our generations, our demographics, industries, um, and then we'll, we'll end you with, with our uh, advice moving forward. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. What is motivation? Motivation includes the internal and external factors that stimulate energy and desire for someone to do their job. As a business owner, we take that into our customer. If your employees are motivated to do their job, we're going to do a better job, and the customers are gonna see that, and there's gonna be business impact. My name is Matt Foley, and I am a motivational speaker. First off, I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. So when we talk about the types of motivation, the internal or intrinsic um, is, is when you're driven by internal rewards, whereas the external or the extrinsic um, has to do with external rewards, something that you receive from somebody else, this is where money comes in, or rewards. For my example here, I use the fisherman. The fisherman in the first example is, is fishing for a sheer pleasure. There's something inside of him that motivates him to want to go fish. Whereas in the second example, these fishermen are doing it for the reward. They're going out there looking for a monetary gain to, to, work, to win um, some kind of award, a medal. Um, in the two examples, the fishermen could both have um, overlying motivations, but um, primarily the intrinsic one uses the uh, motivation from within, whereas the extrinsic is looking for external reward. It's a problem of motivation, all right? Now, if I work my ass off and Initech ships a few extra units, I don't see another dime. So where's the motivation? Let's dig a little deeper into intrinsic motivation. This is the motivation from within. This is where the theme of our, our presentation comes from, the eye of the tiger, where the subject in the song is driven from within for the fight, for the reward of being the best. Um, not necessarily for the reward of being the best, but improving themselves to go forward. Uh, first example here, growth-based. Um, that's similar to the example in the song, where the intrinsic motivation is to get better, to always be making yourself better step by step, similar to the achievement base, where it's not necessarily the award, but the fact that they're improving, that they want to do better and better. Um, that kind of motivation um, brings um, the best work out of those types of people. And then the fear base, kind of the opposite lens, but uh, similar, where the fear of being the same or fear of not improving is what drives the person to be motivated to do their job better, to do um, better on the, the tasks that they, that they are assigned. So let's look at the other example, extrinsic. So these are motivators from external sources, similar to money, awards. Um, starting off with money, um, that, is, that is a great motivator uh, when you're talking about retaining and attracting new talent. Um, but as far as motivating somebody to do their job better, um, that's where we will go into it further when we, when we apply it. Um, some other non-financial base, would be like promotions, awards, um, social gain, and responsibility. And our examples here with like Wolf of Wall Street and 21, some, they put ethics aside for monetary gain, for social gain. Um, that's what motivates the, the uh, protagonists in each of these movies, that, uh, that they're motivated to do better based on external factors. Let me tell you something. There is no nobility in poverty. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every
in time. In the Forbes article listed below, money is not the best motivator. It discusses how uh, motivation typically does not come from monetary gain. That's a good way to attain and retain talent. But as far as motivating employees, um, there's other factors involved, and that's where we get into these other intrinsic and extrinsic examples um, that's also displayed here in the next slide. Motivation, whether intrinsic or extrinsic, can be reflected in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Starting on the foundation um, and our basic needs, these can typically be met with the monetary gain. When we're talking about attracting talent, um, a paycheck can typically give you the security the safety, the food and water that are involved in the foundational elements of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Moving up into uh, the psychological needs, these can be met intrinsically or extrinsically. A lot of applications can, can bring you to this level um, based on the esteem needs and the feeling of belongingness. These can be the social or it could be um, just the, the internal motivation to, to be um, in, a, in a group and a, in a well-performing team. Moving up to the self-fulfillment needs, um, these are typically intrinsic. So getting your um, employees, motivating people um, to the point where they feel like they're achieving their full potential, um, that's an intrinsic feeling. And Maslow's hierarchy needs represents that where further you get to the top, the more motivated of employee you have. I am now a child of light. Your earthly money holds no appeal to me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start talking to you guys about how motivation is differentiated uh, between various social groups and uh, just kind of how applicable, applicable it is depending on age and various other demographics. Listen, you little wiseacre. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. So motivation is certainly not a static thing, and nor are all motivational factors valued by everybody equally. Uh, statements like, because you just have to, money is necessary to live, paint a very extrinsic view of motivation, and one that is certainly not shared by everybody. Uh, while that is applicable to some people, uh, age, industry, and other demographics play a large role in helping to predetermine what companies can do as far as providing motivational perks and benefits. We're adding a little something to this month's sales contest. As you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. Third prize is you fired. Let's start with generation or age. Uh, going back to the silent generation, i.e. those born between 1930 and 1945, uh, one of the biggest motivational factors was loyalty, thus there was a high degree of job stability, and that was in turn rewarded with greater job responsibilities, higher pay, and greater benefits. Uh, the baby boomers from 46 to 64 uh, they are a little bit more motivated by title, recognition, uh, money, very much so, and uh, a lack of control of work and the balance between their everyday lives was something that was not really deemed as largely important so long as they were making good money and providing for their families. Uh, Generation X comes into play between 1965 and 1980. Uh, money is increasingly less of a motivating factor. Uh, control over a work schedule, being able to take vacations, uh, get perks, you know, such as bonuses and so on and so forth. Uh, and in particular, a chance to advance in their career was one of the biggest factors that drove them. Uh, this brings us to millennials, those between 1981 and 95, money is even less of a factor in motivation for this group. Uh, they strongly value a work-life balance and they say that relationships between their peers and an opportunity to move ahead are some of the biggest motivating factors in seeking employment. The name's Zelinsky. I make car parts for the American working man because that's what I am. 
and that's who I care about. I'm going to talk about millennials a little deeper just for the sole fact that they will soon make up the largest percentage of workers in the United States. Uh, so what can employers do to provide an attractive culture that millennials desire? Uh, well, according to one millennial's definition of the ideal workplace, it would look a lot like Google. Uh, people would be coming in at 11 o'clock, dressed in shorts, flip-flops, flip uh, having their dog on a leash with a Starbucks latte. Uh, there'd be a company gym, shower, a restaurant, and perhaps even a bar. Hi, what's the damage here? Nothing. For, the, for these? Free. These are complimentary. Complimentary, free. Whatever you want. What you're just saying is, if I, whatever I walk away with here, it's free. Doesn't come down. We're going to kind of transition into motivation by industry and take a look at the service sector versus the manufacturing sector. Uh, services account for roughly 80% of the U.S. GDP, and that's a number that's been growing over the years and continues to do so. Uh, the necessity for interaction between customers and providing good customer services is a reason why uh, companies are increasingly realizing the value of humans as capital. Uh, this aside, employees from both parts of the economy uh, do realize the intrinsic value that comes from doing a good job and being recognized for their achievements. However, you do see a bit more of the ex extrinsic motivators within the manufacturing sector due to the fact that they are typically older workers and have not ever really had to try to attain those intrinsic factors that are becoming increasingly more of a necessity. People can get a cheeseburger anywhere, okay? They come to tchotchkes for the atmosphere and the attitude. Okay, that's what the flair is about. It's about fun. Yeah. So let's take a look at motivation uh, between the public sector slash government jobs and the private sector. Uh, studies show that public sector employees are oftentimes harder to motivate than those in the private sector. Why is that? Uh, there are ver a variety of reasons. Uh, there's a negative public opinion of government employees and the government in general, which in turn leads to people that are less motivated to do their job because they do not feel appreciated for it. Uh, there's oftentimes frequent and unexpected turnover in leadership within government roles. Uh, there's also the sheer nature of the work in government that has a high degree of immeasurable results uh, that are not usually visible or noticed immediately. Uh, there's also a high degree of job security within government employees. Uh, that can lead to some to take the tendency to not necessarily pull their weight as much as others and then the others, in turn, do less work because they see others getting away with it. Wait. They're all slots? I'm going to kind of tie this all together now. Uh, essentially, human motivation is a direct reflection of our innate human needs. Uh, because physiological and safety needs are really not something that people have to worry about as much as they did, you know, 70, 80 years ago. Uh, those motivational factors are kind of being taken over by a lot of the uh, second level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, this is why millennials place such a premium on a healthy work-life balance, the need for intimate relationships with their peers, coworkers, and uh, finding friendships, you know, happiness kind of supersedes those basic needs of food, shelter, that you know, people in the 30s, 40s, 50s place such a high value on. Uh, a study by Glassdoor finds that 80% of employees are motivated uh, to work harder when shown appreciation by their uh, bosses, whereas 40% are not are motivated to work harder if they have a boss that is demanding or they are under threat of losing their job. Uh, this kind of relates to the need for prestige and a feeling of accomplishment that is in turn validated by uh, appreciation, recognition, uh, whether through intangible rewards or even just simply verbal praise. You can't do anything. You're a loser. You'll always be a loser. You, you couldn't even finish high school because you were so stupid, so what are you gonna do? I'll do something, I'll do it. You know what, I'll go somewhere and I'll do something. Maybe I'll run away, but you can never find me. I wanna hit on like a kind of a final point here. Uh, people are motivated by engaging work, challenges, and increased responsibility. While this was always 
kind of the case. Uh, a lot of those essential physiological and safety needs superseded those, so people were not always really in a position to try and attain them, and motivational factors that related to them were not really necessary. Uh, of course, as we get to the point where we're on the second level of needs, such as friendship, belongingness, uh, we're seeing that as many of the motivational uh, efforts that are needed to retain and attract employees. Uh, that final level, of course, is something that not everybody is going to reach, so that's kind of where we're at the point where there's a bit of a combination between intrinsic and uh, extrin extrinsic motivating factors. Uh, so positive relationships with coworkers, uh, monetary bonuses, rewards, incentives, or even just social gatherings or a lax dress code, those kind of fall in that middle range of motivators that many people will have that may not have the chance to reach the uh, level of self-actualization uh, on Maslow's hierarchy. Uh, therefore, the degree to which motivating factors are practically useful in a workplace depends on the type of work and the realistic chance employees have of getting that highest uh, level of human need. I have a competition in me. I want no one else to succeed. In closing, this is Logan and Matt, and we want to thank you for watching our presentation on motivation. And I hope this motivates you to look at motivation a little differently when you're trying to motivate your teams. Now go out and set the world on fire.